<laughs> I opened up my apartment for a minute. Hey, you gotta do things you gotta do. I know. Okay. 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 So, full screen, here we are back in the witch's portal. Welcome, welcome to the witch's portal, Lauren Ann. And um, happy witch's new year, as I was saying. I know, happy Samhain, happy Halloween. So you've been doing tons of um, celebration types of things also like with your business and having tents all over and reading cards, has it been fun? Oh my gosh. It's fun. It's exhausting. It's exciting. It's interesting. And <laughs> it's all the things. It's good. It's really good. It is I'm all really the things. Yeah. Um, even just being in here, just, you know, being in, in here and, and having to be, um, Ooh, directing wanna, wanna, and, yeah, oh, we should God. definitely. Yes. 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 So, so we've been doing lots of meditations. I just had someone come over and we did an interview here with them in my house. And um, she is a death midwife. And so we were talking about death work and then um, they led us through a really powerful meditation at the end of, uh, kind of how we can energetically reach back and contact our ancestors like 500, 1000 years ago. Um, it was really cool. So yeah, we've been doing, we've been having lots of conversations uh, about death. We had like a whole we had a witches panel yesterday where we all um, talked about, you know, um, women's empowerment issues and the whole kind of timeline of being a witch. And so um, for everyone watching, Lauren has recently been on the show. Um, all of the season two episodes are currently available on YouTube. So that's where you can watch all of them. Um, and so we were talking about uh, her pathway to becoming a witch and how her life has kind of transformed from what it was to what it is. And then, you know, she's a full, full service witch. She does, she works with astrology and tarot and she makes ritual bags and um, products that she's selling and booths and on all of that. So you're just fully in it. Yes, I am. And I have stuff tonight if anyone wants to buy anything. I have specialty bags that I created for Samhain for- Let's see what you have. Yeah. yeah. So this is the Spirit of Samhain bag that I created. It smells, imagine walking through the woods and there's a campfire burning and there's somebody brewing something over a cauldron and friends laughing and holding hands and oh, it just smells like oh. all of the things. So I created this bag to be used in Samhain rituals, to connect to your higher self, to your ancestors, or if you just want to um, keep it with you and keep the season alive long past Samhain and just have, you know, this time of year with you. You can keep it in your purse. You can keep it on your altar. You can bring it in your car or at your job, wherever you want. And you'll have that scent. And then, you know, whenever you want to deconstruct any of my spell bags, you can open them up. You can put the herbs and burn them, you know, on their altar, or you can, um, give, uh, put the crystals on your altar and keep them with you. So this is the spirit of Samhain bags um molly and, wants one yeah she wants I, you to put the link in the chat because she wants one okay so you can actually just dm me on instagram so how can i put that in here can you get to your chat from where you were here i can do it tell me what um your just, instagram is, is lauren, at lauren and alchemy yeah so and I'm going to be doing these, um, these were 35, they're gonna be 30 now, plus the cost of shipping. So yeah, so go right over to my Instagram, send me a DM, say, saw you in the witch's portal and I want this spell bag. Um, so these are the Spirit of Sound bags. I have limited stock of everything. So once some of these are gone, they won't be back until next season, but that's this one. I want one too. I also have, a couple more. So I have, these are, these are a little harder to see, but these are my divination darlings. If anybody watches me regularly, I use the word darlings pretty regularly. <laughs> uh. My little, um, 
term of endearment. So these are the divination darlings and these are fabulous. These are purple satin bags inside here and they have these cute little uh, jack-o'-lantern charms on them. They come in the, all these come in these spider web bags, which are great Super and beautiful. Cute. Yeah. Yes. You can use them for any, anything you want. You can make your own bags, you know, that you want to carry stuff in. You want to put other crystals or whatnot. There's instructions in everything. So it tells you what's in them, how to use them, how to deconstruct them, um, what herbs, essential oils, and, um, and how to contact me. And so these ones are designed to help you to connect to your divination skills. If you're a reader or if you meditate or if you want to, I had a couple of people come up recently at some of the booths I was doing and said, I want to find my purpose. I want to find my, my path. I want to find what I'm meant to do. What do you have for that? And I said, well, what better than to tap into your divination skills, right? To your higher self, to your own guidance system. So these bags can be used in a multitude of ways. Um, so all the bags tonight are 30 plus the cost of shipping, depending on where you live. I do ship internationally, um, will be a little bit more, but I'll ship it all over. Cool. And then I have these other babes. These are my, we were just talking about Samhain and connecting to your ancestors. So these are called the alchemy of your ancestor bags. And these ones are great for specifically connecting to those who've passed recent or long past, like you were just saying, how you can get attuned to and in touch with, or if you just want a talisman to keep these with you to feel their energy and, you know, say a little meditation, say a little incantation. I've put the spells together. You don't have to do anything. That's what I tell people. Like I've done all the work. You just keep it with you. But if you want to re-energize these things, if you want to put your own little twist on it and add your own energy to it, that's what they're designed for. I want you to develop a relationship with them. I even say it in the notes, like keep it on your person, keep it by your bed, let it mingle with your energy. So if you want this to really embody any relatives who passed on, you know, say a little meditation and incantation to it, to whatever it is and meditate with it regularly and keep it with you. Um, all of the crystals, all of the herbs, all of the oils that I've picked for these specific bags have specific purposes. Um, you know, there's amethyst in some, there's just beautiful, gorgeous, the oil blends. They just remind you of this time of year and they just transport you, you know? So this is the alchemy of the ancestor bag. And then the last couple ones that I have, I have protection bags, which we all need. These ones are for energetic protection. They are for physical protection. They are for travel protection, for work protection, for school protection, wherever. You know, things like smoky quartz and black tourmaline and burdock root and sage oil, anything to help keep your space clear. And they're also great gifts for people who move into a new home or change jobs or going on a long trip. So I have a couple of these protection bags. And I also have some, you're going to love this one, Jamie. So these are my Scorpio season vibes bags. And these ones have crystals, herbs, and oils connected to the sign of Scorpio. I do every single Zodiac sign. So if you're a different sign and you're interested in getting an Aquarius bag, send me a message. I can custom make one and send it to you. But these ones I designed for the sign of Scorpio and they have these great little triple goddess charms on them. Oh, and those are 30 also? <laughs> these are all 30, 30? bucks. Cool. Yeah. And they all have between about three and five hand-picked beautiful tumbled crystals and smell amazing. They come in these satin bags. I've got some stickers and some uh, cards in there. I'll throw in some extra Halloween stickers and goodies when I ship them out to you. But yes, someone asked, all of these bags are 30. Um, the Halloween and Samhain inspired ones were 35, but I'm gonna give everybody a discount tonight. So if you're interested in any, send me a message and we'll set you up with some. Everybody, this is birthday presents going forward. This is where they're coming from. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so great. Um, okay, I'll stop thinking about that. I'm like, I want. <laughs> and I do custom 
orders. I get a lot of, I'm also making bottles. I mean, I've got a lot, a lot of new products coming out in the next couple of months. Um, but I also started doing spell bottles, wearable ones. So like mini little spell bottles that you can wear, ones you can put by your bed, ones you can keep wherever. I have a, a whole different variety of those that I'm coming out with that I started creating and, um, and a couple other really new, exciting things. <laughs> uh, hold on. That's okay. <laughs> you okay? Huh? Here. This is Pixie. I could be having a hairball, but it just didn't sound good. So I wanted to bring her over here. Are you going to be okay? I wanted to play. Uh, huh? I said she wanted to come play. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. So normally on Sundays, uh, Lauren does this thing for her community called Witch Weekly. Mm -hmm. And she's going to do it for us today. Yeah. So I have some of my notes over here. Um, and I was going to introduce myself, but Jamie already did. But for those of you who don't know, like she said, I um, my name is Lauren Defont. And uh, I'm the creator and the head witchpreneur of Lauren Ann Alchemy, which is my own business that I crafted to provide tarot, astrology, and witchcraft services for all my clients. And I use it to help them alchemize their fears, their challenges, their roadblocks into success, into change, into transformation. Um, and so every week, I love to set everybody up for success with um, some astrology for what's going on, some tarot. I go over, you know, my upcoming events and if I have bags and specialties and, um, and sometimes I even do like crystal highlights, which I want to do tonight for everybody. And, um, so Samhain, right? This is, this is so exciting that we're doing this today. I'm so honored and so happy to be doing it today. Like what a magical day, what an inspiring what an incredible, like, I don't know about anybody else, but I, I'm an empath and I'm an intuitive and I connect to people who've passed on and the energy has just been really ripe recently. And like my witchy spidey senses have been tingling <laughs> and people have been coming through and things have been coming up. And I've just found that October has been such a I knew it was going to be a busy month. I knew it was going to be beautiful, but I had no idea when this month started what was going to transpire. So I just hope that everyone else is looking back on this month and saying, wow, what an incredible time to be alive. What a beautiful moment. What an incredible like energy. And I, and you know, as a witch, Samhain is our new year. It's our time to celebrate all that we've achieved this year and to invoke and invite in what we want to embody for the coming year, you know, what we want to inspire in ourselves and inspire in others. And it's also a time where the veil is really thin and we get to connect to those who we've lost and honor and give gratitude and, um, share in the wisdom that they've all imparted on us. And it's an excellent time to hang pictures, uh, you know, on your altar and offerings of things that they enjoyed. I know that for my father, I'll be putting out a beer and for my mother, I'll be putting out some coffee, you know, and my one aunt like candy. So just different things I love to put out. I'll put out a dog treat for my one dog who passed away. So I love to put these things out for them and I'll be doing some divination work later. And the part of the reason that this incredible spiritual connection is going on right now and leads me to like um, around Samhain is that the sun is in Scorpio. We have our little Scorpio right there. <laughs> and as we all know, um, there's this intensity and emotional depth that Scorpio colors the sun with, right? And the sun is is the center of our solar system. And so the sun signs and when the, when a sign zodiac sign is, you know, the sun is in a zodiac sign, it's this will, it's this life force, it's this energy, right? So it's a very mystical, magical, layered zodiac sign that really asks us 
you know, this time of year to connect to our inner workings and to do the necessary shadow work so that we may shed and unburden ourselves of the weight that we might have been carrying around and let it go as we shift into the waning phase of the year. This is like a setup time. You know, for the darker months, for this, you know, um, turn inward, right? I mean, at least, and for me, more so, where I live, it gets really cold. It gets really dark. It snows, you know, like it, it doesn't necessarily where Jamie lives, but it, here, you know, it's really that sort of got like hermit vibes, right? You're, we're turning into our intuition. We're into the questions that we want to ask ourselves and Scorpio asks really important questions and I think to me that's why a lot of people may be like oh Scorpios are so intense or Scorpios are so this and it's like because it asks you these really important questions that we don't want to do <laughs> you know like I have Saturn in Scorpio so my Saturn return was rough I can imagine that, that would be intense. <laughs> and um, so it's it's a really beautiful time to to journal, to do any kind of reevaluation, you know, and really, you know, go over what you've been working on, but also, as I said, celebrate your achievements. Don't be like, well, I haven't done anything. So I want to do A, B, C, and D like celebrate what you've come, how far you've come. Think back to where you were last October and really kind of reevaluate. And now we also have Mars that has moved into Scorpio and in traditional astrology, um, before the outer planets were discovered, Mars ruled Scorpio. Right. And so he feels at home here. I, I equivalate it to it's sort of like his childhood house that he grew up in, but doesn't live in anymore. Right. <laughs> you know, modern astrology, Scorpio is ruled by Pluto, which we know is all about deep transformation. Um, so you may find yourself with Mars and Scorpio right now, driven towards that transformation. With I was this born with Mars and Scorpio. Look at you. I got a lot of fire because of that. <laughs> so there's a lot of, there's a lot of themes of rebirth and transformation around this time, being able to move through and work out challenges and, you know, being even being able to navigate change um, and doing the work, all deep, dark, dirty work is important and it will reap incredible results. And we also have the moon in Virgo. So your intuitive, your emotional, your unconscious nature is wanting you to go over all the details. Virgo is very meticulous. I live with a Virgo and he loves to keep me grounded. He loves to help me go over all the fine, you know, fine details where I'm like, well, I'm, I'm dreaming all the way up here. And he's like, well, wait a second, let's fine tune it, which is great. You need, you need Virgo energy. So you might find yourself, you know, wanting to structure and organize how you go forward right now, putting together a system of how you want to conjure or create what comes next for you. So that's the energies that we're working with right now, you know, and this week, those are the major themes. We've got the sun and Mars and Scorpio. We've got the moon and Virgo this year. Into this, um, you know, newer energy and this. Um, one second. Oh, what happened? Where'd I go? There I am. Um, we're moving into this darker phase of the year. So it's a beautiful time to. I always find journaling really important. And I always go to my tarot cards. So the, I wanted to highlight the few tarot cards that I associate with Samhain. And then I actually pulled three cards um, to guide us for the week. Um, like I do every week on my show. So 
the three cards that I wanted to highlight that I find are most connected to Samhain are the death card, the moon card, and the six of cups. So the death card for obvious reasons, transformation, rebirth, um, just being reborn and shedding away anything that does not serve us or does not we do not connect to anymore. Moon card, it's all about our unconscious nature. It's all about our emotional body. And the six of cups, I always see that card as like reverence, as nostalgia, as something that, you know, going back over the things that brought us joy and our you know, our relatives, our ancestors. So if you want, you can take any of these three cards, do a journal prompt, put them on your altar, keep them with you. Um, see how they speak to you. See how you connect to them. See how you associate with them. What speaks to you about those three cards? Um, I actually love the death card. I think that it brings about this opportunity for change, especially if things aren't working for you anymore. Um, and the moon card can be a difficult card because it's putting you face to face with your emotions, that rawness, that unconscious, that instinctual will. And then the six of cups has you kind of trotting down memory lane and going over things from your past and this time of year when we can connect to those who have passed on it's a beautiful card to connect to and um align with those energies I'll take a sip of water real fast so every week on my show i always pull a few cards um for the week depending on what's going on what energies are happening and what we're doing depends on what kind of spread I pull. So I did a card for what we're letting go of. I did a card for what we're calling in for the new year. And then I did a guidance card from our ancestors. And so I wanna start with the card, I wasn't going to, but the card for what we're calling in for the new year. Um, this card, when I was shuffling, it actually like I shuffled and it shot out this way at me. So I couldn't like ignore that. And it was the star card. Now, if anyone knows me or has watched anything that I've done, the star card, um, I have an association with that with my father. My father passed when I was young. So the fact that he's come through in this card and for us this week and in what we're calling in for the new year, um, is a beautiful card. I mean, the star card embodies hope, renewal, uh, ambition, clarity, insights, you know, newfound talents, aha moments. I always say the stars shine brightest in the dark and when the star card comes after the tower, which is a moment of restructuring and rebuilding who and what we are. And so not giving up and striving towards our dreams, our goals, our ambitions, it's a beautiful thing to be shifting into in the next few weeks, next few months of our lives card I pulled for us that we're letting go of is the five of wands. And that's to me all about struggle and conflict. And I see it as a card of like competition, right? They're battling against each other in the five of wands and this can be internal or external. So this could be an internal battle that you've been struggling with, that you've been you know, maybe finding yourself that you've been going over the same things and kind of spinning your wheels, or maybe it's an external conflict. Maybe it's something at work or something in your family or something in your relationships that just keeps kind of cycling and repeating. So I find this to be a beautiful time to learn from one another rather than feeling as though you have to battle or compete. Um, collaboration rather than competition, meeting it with grace. How can you see these kind of headbutting instances or moments of conflict as an opportunity to work together or resolve differences, or if it's a time to just walk away from something and let it go? And how can you meet that with grace? 
something to really sit with and really think about. Um, and it's not an easy thing to shift and move through. So kind of sitting with that and reevaluating how we can, you know, well, this is a, a, a external conflict I'm having with so-and-so and how do I make them see my way? Well, meeting them with a certain energy will shift their energy and their perspective. And if we keep battling ourselves internally, how can we treat ourselves with grace? How can we um, cut ourselves a break rather than being hard on ourselves? And then the last part that I pulled for the guidance from our ancestors is the six of uh, pentacles, which is, I have the Halloween tarot out tonight. So this is a, the six of pumpkins. <laughs> um, and so I see the six of pentacles as a card of give and take, of exchange of energies, of giving and receiving, of balance, of the flow of energy, of generosity, uh, sharing your wisdom and your knowledge with others um, to keep this sort of flux moving. And this is what our ancestors and our guidance systems are asking us. Um, how can we give to others and keep this moving, keep this flow, keep this cycle of positivity, of sharing, of balance, of support, right? I think it's a beautiful um, flow. I just saw something pop up in the chat. Oh, awesome. I love that. Um, yeah, so those are the those are the cards I connect with the Samhain. Those are the cards I pulled for that. Um, and then I just I made a really great list and I brought some beautiful crystals along that I wanted to share um, that I personally use to work with for um, for Samhain. And the first one is Smoky Quartz. I mean, I love Smoky Quartz. It's just an incredible protective grounding like soothing it's just a stone that really helps seal in <laughs> your energy and me as a very sensitive person can't hold a second can't see. Hold on. There it is. Um, I have smoky quartz on me every single day. Smoky quartz and black tourmaline. I don't leave the house without it. <laughs> um, and I have this one on a shelf in my living room. So that way my energy at my home is always picked. So if you're doing any kind of ritual work or divination work, it's really important to have protective crystals and grounding crystals around you so that your energy is sealed. And then I have amethyst, everybody's favorite. I love this piece. If you can see, there's a really cool rainbow in there somewhere. Um, so amethyst is great for connecting to your intuition. Um, it's also a very um, protective stone, helps to connect to your higher guidance systems. Um, and really helped you to soothe and trust and relax. And it's a great stress relieving crystal. Um, it's great for headaches too. Um, I put amethyst in a lot of my bags. Then I have, knocking everything over. Then I have obsidian. Oh, my obsidian crystal is so fun. So this is my little Jack Skellington pumpkin obsidian. <laughs> That is so cute. My friend Sailor, um, so Green Witch and Crow, she sells and does live sales and I get some of the most amazing crystals from her. And I got this, she did like a Halloween in July sale. And so I got this from her and I love it. He sits on my altar pretty much ever since then. He's not leaving. <laughs> Cause the Nightmare Before Christmas is one of my favorite movies too. And I was like, I just I love him. everything I about him. him. Yes. <laughs> So obsidian, again, is another protection crystal. Um, I like 
if I'm, if I know I'm going into a really stressful situation, I always use obsidian. So it's really great. Even if you're not a sensitive, but if you are just, you know, there's a lot of energies floating around right now. So keeping your energy clear and protected is important. And again, if you're doing any kind of work, I also have fluorite. This is a really pretty crystal here. Fluorite I love because it's great for clarity. Um, it's great for focus. Uh, so again, if you're looking to set intentions for the new year, if you're looking to connect to anyone who's passed on, if you're looking to do shadow work, it's a great crystal to have. Then I have Labradorite another one of everyone's favorites. This one's got beautiful flash. I hope we can get it. I don't know, maybe not. But Labradorite again is just an incredible crystal for magical intentions. It's also energetically protective. To me, it brings kind of the divine down into the mundane. Um, just, you know, staring at it, it's just so stunning. And um, harnessing magic and really helping you to tap, tap, tap la, 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 helping you to tap into your own, you know, purpose and your own divinity. Then I have, because we're in Scorpio season, some moonstone. This one's got some beautiful flash too, if we can catch that one. It's like a really gorgeous slab. Like I will clear my crystals on selenite and then I will charge them on this moonstone depending on what I'm using them for. But I love this piece too. And then I have some citrine. Citrine is an incredible crystal to bring in good luck, abundance and prosperity for the new year. So what better crystal than a little ray of sunshine to invoke and inspire some success for the coming months. So you can use any of these crystals. You can put them by your bed. You can put them on your altar. You can keep them on your person. I mean, I put a bunch of them in my spell bags. You can put them all in a bag together. However you want to work with them um, is up to you. I... Um, so I keep a lot of mine in different spots in different places, depending on what I'm using them for. And I wear tons of bracelets and all kinds of stuff like that. But I have crystals everywhere. And I have really seen such an incredible change in my life since I really started working with them um, for different purposes. And of course, if anyone ever has any questions on crystals or how to use them or what crystals they have comments or questions on, you can send me a message. I'm always open for conversation and discussions on crystals. Um, unless anyone has any questions, that's all I have for this week's episode. Um, I see something down here. All done. You guys haven't seen the movies that made us episode. I just heard about that show that, um, for the Nightmare Before Christmas episode. I heard it's outstanding. I can't wait to watch it. Um, can you share an example of how your life has changed for crystals? So, yeah, I, um, so about, if you watch the episode that Jamie and I, when I was on her show about six years ago, I had what I call my nervous breakdown and my spiritual breakthrough. And I thought I was like physically and emotionally and mentally losing my mind. And I didn't know where to turn. I mean, I, went to doctors. I did so many different things and come to find out I was having this like energetic sort of reboot <laughs> where like my physical body was catching up to my spiritual body. And I started working with crystals to help to ground me, to meditate with them. I've used some for like physical healing. Like I've used hematite for bruising. I've used amethyst for headaches. I've used lipidolite for stress, for anxiety. I've used it like, uh, for driving anxiety. Like there's been times because I'm so sensitive because I'm an empath. I like, I'm very affected by other people's energies. And if I'm driving in tons of traffic, sometimes it just gets to be too much. Like I've used lipidolite for that. I've used howlite when I had terrible insomnia. I've used stromatolite when I was almost grinding my teeth at night. So I've used it for so many different things. 
And because of their structure, crystals can really help stabilize our energies, you know, because they are way more stable than humans are. <laughs> um, they, the, in, the interaction, the energetic interaction, it's just, sometimes it's intention, right? But I've seen actual physical, mental, and emotional changes in my life because of all of these different crystals that I've used. Um, and I can't speak enough to the addition to them in my lives in addition to other things and how they've impacted me and just how I've seen a change. I've also used a bunch of them for connecting to my divination skills and also using them in ritual and practices and helping them using them to help others, help them, you know, speed up their healing processes or their grieving processes. Um, and just introducing people to the magic of crystal healing and how many benefits there are. I hope that answers your question. So awesome, Lauren, and, and you are so, um, knowledgeable about all of this. You know, it's really fun, I think, for all of us when we get together and we're talking with other witches that have the same knowledge base, right? It's yeah. just, um, I don't know why it's so exciting, but it just, it is so exciting. It's this thing that uh, we weren't allowed to, this way that we weren't allowed to be for so long. I mean, even when I was young, I remember hearing about crystals and that they were bad. Um, my family wasn't particularly religious or, you know, at all. I mean, my mom goes to church and stuff now, but um, I didn't, it, as I didn't grow up around it, but I would have friends that were involved in youth groups and things like that. And I would hear about how crystals were bad and wow. um, like that, you know, the devil and all of that could like use the crystals. And um, so anyway, it's really just it's so it's so exciting to be uh in this time of life where we can um talk about all of these things like out loud and be you know in the using all of these things and like sharing all of the tips and the wisdom with each other it's just it's super fun and um and, and i love hearing i love hearing everyone talk about it about the things that they know in the way that they know it in the way that it applies to them. Um, I think we all learn, you know, just we, we just all learn something from everyone that we're listening to, right, share about their information about it. So this is so great. What a great program. And you do this every week and you talk about the astrology of the week and pull some cards and then talk about crystals. All of those crystals you were mentioning, I know that um, that those are like, I guess they're common ones, right? But yeah, yeah. because we all love them, like to have all of those crystals around you and like that's the environment that you live in. And we know which ones we need to touch, you know, and hold on to and like put in our pocket or closer to our chest or whatever for the, that day. Yeah. Um, and I love all of those ones you were talking about. And Lapidolite, yeah, super great. Oh my God. It's, it's, it's super great. I've given them that to uh, friends that have anxiety and stuff like that. So, but like that, and uh, just even just the feeling of like that and the labradorite and the fluorite together, like um, I noticed for me, I love, I have this smoky quartz that one of my teachers gave me and I, and I need grounding, but like, for example, if I'm doing readings, I can't have these grounding stones around me actually which I thought initially when I started reading like full time for people, mm -hmm. I was working at a, in a store, I was like, okay, I'm definitely going to need all this like grounding. And then actually like what I need is fluorite. I need to just have like a bunch of fluorite around me. Um, and it's amazing so. too, because everyone will connect to different crystals and each one will call to us. You know, yeah. my, my teachers, she like, didn't like fluoride at all. And I was like, she's like, I just don't jive with it. And that, and she's like, I, no, no, it doesn't matter if anybody else, like everybody else does. It just doesn't work with me, you know? And there's been certain crystals that I'm not particularly drawn to. So I love hearing that too, because everyone has different relationships with them. And I love giving crystals to people who may not have believed or didn't understand, but we're looking for something, you know, specifically like my boyfriend, he had never touched a crystal in his life, didn't know anything about it. 
he has like four different spell bags I've made him and he loves all of them and he won't open any of them. Like I made him a protection bag over a year ago that he's never opened. He had problems with his knees. I made him a bag. He never complains about them anymore. And he's like, he's like a skeptic, not a skeptic. Like he believes everything, but it's like, He's a science guy. So like he had to experience it to believe it. And once he experienced all the magic, he's like the first one to be like, no, no, she knows exactly what she's talking about. Yeah. I forget what sign you are. So my son is in Capricorn, okay. which is doing all of the things all of the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, but my moon, my rising and my Mars are all in Pisces. Okay. So, okay. Remember this conversation. Yeah. It's where all of my spiritual connections come from. And I'm like a spiritual warrior, right? Like I'm not one to put up a crazy fight. Like my Mars is like, let's talk it out. You know? <laughs> yeah. My Mars is conjunct my son. We talked about this. My Mars mm -hmm. is conjunct Uranus conjunct my son. They're all conjunct. Um, so my, I, you know, and my, uh, my Chiron is also in Mars. So a lot of my teaching is, it's why it's all about, it's why it's about empowerment. It doesn't matter if you're getting, ca reading cards for me. And if you're coming to my martial arts class or if you're just my friend or whatever, there is just like this fire aspect. And so, but for me, I really had to learn about um, healthy anger and that like all anger isn't bad, you know? So I've been like on, you know, different sides was like how to process it. But that Capricorn is what is really helping you with your business aspects and yeah. um, you know i'm i'm such a promoter and supporter of of us creating business around this type of knowledge and to be able to like serve in this way i think all of this information is it's up right now because it's what people need it people humanity needs it the planet needs it yeah. you know all of this information and it makes sense, but when I knew that we were going to be in this age of Aquarius, um, I mean, it was already right decided before I was born. But when I start to learn about it and talk about it and all of that, I, it seems to make sense that this would be all the things that we were talking about. But I just did never believe that the general public was going to have the information that they do and that people in general were going to be like having crystals and wanting card readings and talking about um tarot and their signs and you know all of that stuff so it's definitely enjoyable um and uh good job with everything you're doing i'm gonna get a scorpio bag heck yeah i mean i want the salmon one because like what you're talking about it i'm like i can smell it like i can just smell it right now when you were showing it to us i was expecting <laughs> to get like a a wave of what it smelled like i was just kind of so activated by it but I also think that I need the Scorpio bag, so we can talk about it, but I want to get something from you too. And thanks for offering us the discount. Yeah. Um, so we should all follow you. Everybody should follow Lauren. She does something like this every Sunday and it's alive on her Instagram feed. Obviously we can watch it later, but it's also a fun way to jump in and do this kind of thing. 